I find that addiction actually to be the biggest blessing in my entire life because it led me to finally get the help that I needed. I sought out people that could help me walk through what was going on. Um, I decided to also get, you know, a therapist to kind of walk through, you know, that past trauma that I had experienced. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewan Fo, and I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. I learned skills that I had never had before. And it was where I really finally got to discover who I wanted to be in this world. And I started to dream again. I, I stopped dreaming. When I got stuck in my addiction, I stopped dreaming. I stopped thinking about the future. I was constantly stuck in the past and all the terrible things that happened to me. And I also couldn't realize like while I was in it, why I was so unhappy. I was so unhappy and I felt like I had done all the right things. I, I led this life that everybody told me I had to, to lead. I had gotten good grades. I went to school. I got, you know, I graduated from college. I got the job. I had the, the husband. I had the family. I had an amazing house. Why was I so unhappy? It didn't make sense. I felt like I had followed that formula that everybody had told me that I needed to follow, yet I was completely unhappy. And that addiction started to help me realize how I could take control of my actions and my responses to what happens to me. And it really shaped who I am today. And it really motivated me to want to help people that were like me, that felt like they followed that entire formula, but they were so, you know, disappointed by what life had to offer. And I think it's because a lot of people, they're not taught to dream big. We're taught to just accept what, what comes in life, be happy with what you have. And when we get, let's just be happy with what we have we we just kind of accept everything that happens to us versus realizing that we have responsibility to take control of anything in our lives we we can control our emotions we have control over how we respond to other people that maybe are not making us feel comfortable or are upsetting us in some way there are appropriate ways to communicate with people and today, like, I never look at other people and expect, oh, well, this is the way you should have reacted or this is the way you should have responded. Instead, it's how can I respond in this situation that is going to make me feel better after we leave the situation? And I don't have to be mean to other people. I can speak with kindness and love and acceptance. And I think that's something that I try to apply in everything. I try to be my authentic self today and who I want to be so that other people can start to feel free to be who they are and the best version of themselves as well. All right. I'm not going to go um, deeper into the, the, addic the addiction, but I, I'm interested in the exit when you, were, when you were coming out of it, because I think people need to know more about that or how to deal with it. But what yeah. I want to go uh, deeper in it is because so that we'll be able to have time to deal with the thing that is most important today, which is your training uh, classes. Uh, but because you did make mention of it, I wanted to help me understand, uh, were you the one that called for help or somebody saw that you were going through uh, this trouble and the person called for help? At what point did this help come? Uh, tell us a little bit how you eventually get out of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, please. You know, I just, I woke up one day and I, I just felt myself in this repeating pattern and my, my call for help actually was to God, to God himself. And I just said, God, I need guidance. I don't know what to do. And he, he led me to find the group that helped me overcome everything. And as soon as I got to that group, they said, you need to find a sponsor. And I was like, oh, great. What's a sponsor? And a sponsor is somebody who has been through the same addiction as you. And they've walked through the same path. And they can guide you through as you're dealing with things in real time. They can give you that help and that guidance. Um, I also learned 
learn to replace my addiction with healthy habits, right? Like if I feel like I, I want to, you know, go back and slide instead, I can go to a meeting. I can call my sponsor. I can um, do something healthy. I can pick up a book and I can read. I can um, go for a walk. I can exercise, right? There's things that I can do to replace that immediate need that was being filled by my addiction. And by having those people in my life, I began to develop friends that also were going through the same thing that I was going through, but they were on that road to recovery. And I could reach out to them as well at any point in time. And I really started to begin to feel that sense of belonging and community with a group of people that were trying to live their life on the right side of the street. And I think that was just the most incredible opportunity for me to see, oh, I can do these really fun things without my addiction overcoming me uh, throughout this entire process. We're happy that you managed to recover from me because you're here, uh, you are sharing the story. That is, that is a good thing. That, is a, that yeah. is a good thing at the end of the day. All right, now let's talk about your online tutoring uh, because you are a, an online tutor uh, coach. Uh, can you tell yeah. us how that started? Yeah, so I actually ended up, um, I ended up with a pain in my side that kicked me out of the school system. I was in and out of the hospital and I was just kind of like, I, I took a three month leave of absence and I ended up coming back to work and I sat down in my chair and I was, I was kind of downtrodden at that moment. And I remember hearing this voice and the voice said, you are not meant to be here. And I was, I was broken at that point. Cause I was like, well, if I'm not meant to be here, where am I meant to be? I don't get it. Right. Because I had spent my whole life trying to want to know everything I could to help kids learn how to read. And so if I'm not a reading specialist, who am I? And I had to kind of go through this self-discovery of um, walking through many different entrepreneurial positions working from home that kind of led me down all these different roads and a whole year trying to discover what do I want to do? What do I want to do? How am I going to make a difference in the world? How can I help other people? I, I realized my real passion is teaching reading. And so all of a sudden I was like, wait, I can use Skype because I had learned how to use Skype through those other businesses. And this is back in 2010. I'm like, I can use Skype to do what I love. And I can teach kids how to read. I didn't know how to get clients or really market myself, but, you know, I could do that. So I first started off looking for other tutoring companies that I could work for. Those tutoring companies were only willing to pay me $15 or $20 an hour. And in U.S. money, that is really, really low uh, to be making when you have a master's degree specifically in reading. And so I decided you know what? The only difference between these other companies and myself is that they know how to market myself and market me and I don't. But if I learn how to market myself, then I won't need them. And so that's what I began doing. I started learning how to market myself. I took some of the information from the companies that I had failed at. I used that information to get my first few clients. And I just continued to grow on my own marketing skills so that I could get better at getting myself out there. Because I already knew I knew how to teach really well. I knew how to, to teach reading. I just didn't know how to, to get those clients. And through this entire journey, I was also going through a lot of personal growth and development, right? I was, I was reading every single book that I possibly could about, you know, how to reach these goals, how to become the person that I wanted to become, how to overcome some of the, the weaknesses that I had. And I was reading every single book. I love to read. So I was reading every single book that I could possibly get my hands on so that I could grow as a person. I could change my mindset, but at the same time, I could develop my business as well. And um, after two years, I had broken through. I had learned 
a lot of the things that I needed to learn. And I knew that I could start also helping other tutors that were in a position like me. Because back in 2010, there were not a lot of people that were doing online tutoring. And so I had this wonderful opportunity to kind of start at the beginning and be like, you know what, I can support others who want to really get started with doing online tutoring and get some really great results with their students and, you know, be able to make an income from home doing what they love, um, not have to worry about the school system anymore and the politics and all of that kind of stuff. 